I started going in and out of jail and got involved in the gang life. I was uh, left to raise myself. Back in the day, we're jumping your, one of your homeboys and you pull out a gun from your shoes. Probably five. I remember seeing the first person die. So the life we chose growing up, you know, we didn't have to choose it, but we did. Possession, robbery, petty theft. Got a little bit of everything. A lot of people don't know. It's, uh, I'm a father. There's a lot of people hurting out there. They know when, when you don't know your father. They take you under the wing, all the older homeboys, and they school you. I got shot on this street. I was raised, you know, with, with all the homeboys, so it wasn't that hard for me you know, to get involved into a gang. I see my brother get shot. You can, you can come from, you know, this side of the fence and, 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 and make it. And the other side is, you know, it's hard, you know, it's real hard. I want people to know that. It's not easy coming from this side of the street. I did the gang thing, big time. I was in my teenage years, you know, started doing the gang thing, started doing the drinking thing, started doing the drug thing. That's my place right there. My car. That's what I'm looking for. Go wash it, and then I kick back and go in the morning and go get my, my paper and my beer and kick back in the car, you know, to my cassette. In, in sixth grade, seventh grade, you know, I experimented. And my younger life, drugs and drama. They, your lips are blue, your eyes are black because you stop breathing, you know. I went in and out of the, the county jail system 30-something times. Choices and decisions, I talk a lot about choices and decisions. Because all of that, that hate, it's all poison. It'll kill you. All I knew how to do was do time, do drugs, and uh, come out here to society and then go back home. I got to the point where I was just uh, feeling that I was going to either die or end up doing life in prison. God, I wanted to leave so bad and go use, but I just felt that if I can get through this, that my life might be better. In order to fit in, I couldn't wait till I turned 18 years old to go to prison too. My mother was a heroin addict. She kind of left one night and said she was going to go to church and never came back. You know, a lot of people think that like there is no honor amongst thieves and in the gangs, but it's, it's actually to the contrary. It's actually a whole new family. Growing up in East LA, everybody always says it's bad, but you don't know what bad is until you see what good is. So for us, it was just normal. No matter how much stuff happened, if the house had been shot up, they tried to start it on fire, um, it's still safe for some reason. It's just, with my grandma there, it's just like, there's nothing that can happen to you because she's protected by angels, I guess you could say. I made myself homeless. I've been homeless for about two years, eight months. And that's, that's me, that's my house. I was involved in the gang and just doing, you know, just a lot of bad things. And then over the course of many years, I was arrested a lot of times. I never went to prison or anything like that. Our family is pretty much dysfunctional to the brim, just totally dysfunctional. At 10 months old, I was in an accident, burned a significant part of my body. They actually read me my last right. Having tattoos on my head, it took away the insecurity growing up. Love thy profession. Tattooing was the best thing I ever got into. I'm a tattoo artist. Just tattooing's really changed my life. First place that I went to was Juvenile Hall. I pretty much grew up in that place. Continued to go there all the way until I was uh, almost 18 years old. I felt like I was a soldier in a war. I didn't mind if I got shot in a street corner with some enemy uh, gang members or with police. It would have been an honor for me to die that way. I started getting into gangs when I was probably in fifth grade. My cousin that was from a gang in the valley, he moved in with us. Um, he ended up being killed in front of the house. I, I found him. I with the parole office with the gang unit guy. He's got me to go and help him talk to kids in schools, stay out of gangs, and not take the route that I did. I got my grandkids, and that, that, that gave me a second life. There is some good. I mean, there are good people who come out of bad areas. We pick up food, and then we feed the homeless. I ended up in a, in a program. My life began to turn around. It's pretty good. The best part about it is, you know, I cleaned up my life. I'm, I'm clean and sober. You know, life is what you make it, and I'm trying to make my life the best that, that, I, that, I, that I can be. I promise God, you know, that if you help me, I'll help somebody for the rest of my life. Walking to school, we see the vatos that the gatos itching and twitching, scratching, having the conversation with Satan on a good one, on a good trip. I mean, loaded on some good shit. You might not believe.